to Know Your Gear QA Live 159. I think it's episode 159. Or uh, it's season six, episode 17. We'll see how that works out. As you guys know, or if you're new to the channel and these videos, it's pretty simple. Uh, if you have a question, start it with a question mark first. That way I know you're talking to me. And um, you know what I just realized is there's no... Uh, I just want to make sure my audio is off. Okay, you guys can see me okay, right? <laughs> I Let's refresh this cuz I don't see me. There I am. All right. Okay, cool. Uh sometimes, you know, it's been an interesting couple weeks with the uh the uh the COVID thing and the internet. So, back to what I was saying. If you have a question, start with a question mark first. If you want to just stream this as a podcast, uh, the the uh, all the backdated episodes and additional episodes, there's bonus ones that I'm doing each week. Uh, they are on uh, your podcast platforms. I put a link down below, but it's iTunes, Spotify, you name it. Uh, so, there you go. If you guys didn't hear, Joe Rogan got like $100 million to be on Spotify. I, uh, they were willing to give me about 100 nothing. They gave me nothing. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't matter. You can check it out. Um, so let's let's get into some questions. I have some cool stuff to talk about today. Uh, first things first is hopefully the internet works. Last week we had all kinds of internet problems. Uh, I was check. I checked every component. Everything's fine. It was definitely the internet provider. And of course, even though that I've done a hundred and fifty seven because i'm talking about last week's 157 episodes without incident on the highest tier internet plan that they have no issues last week and the week four start little issues and last week was really bad when we contact them the problem is is although we were on the highest tier there is now a new higher tier internet program so i had to pay an upgrade to that so hopefully uh we're good I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you know, I just keep throwing money at the cable company. What else are you gonna do? They're like the, they're like the heroin. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't do heroin, so I don't know what that is. There's, is it heroin dealers? Is that what you call a heroin dealer? Anyways, <clears throat> we need the, the internet. Is what I'm trying to say. Ryan from Sixty Cycle Hums here again. Hey Ryan, how are you, buddy? How, how I hope you're doing well. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys. We, I probably shouldn't say this, but I, I'm gonna say it anyways. You know, Ryan was gonna come over. And we were going to do content together, and then COVID happened. Uh, in fact, I hope Ryan got his money back on his airline ticket. So, um, and then I see Michael Nelson here. What's up, buddy? How's it going? Uh, by the way, check out not only Ryan's channel, but check out his channel. I know we always, I always mention his channel as well, but check out their channels. I'll put links when I index this. I will index this week's. I did not index last week's because, first of all, thank you to everyone who watched last week's episode. I could not get through it. It was so horrifically stuttering and so bad. Although the audio, of course, uh, for the uh, podcast is recorded separate. So it was perfect and smooth. So I just loaded as podcast and uh, I drank some beers and tried to forget about the afternoon. <laughs> today, more, let me today tell you what today's challenge is before we get started. I have water, lots of water. I have cough drops or I don't know if they're cough drops there. These were cola uh, drops. I've literally had to talk for three hours this morning straight and uh, I, my voice is hoarse already, so I'm going to try to. Uh, we should be fine. Let's get in some questions. That's what you guys are here for. Uh, first, let's start with the announcement. The big announcement. Uh, the big announcement is uh, I have been asked to join a uh, a challenge. The challenge was issued by Crimson Guitars. You guys know Crimson Guitars. They're an amazing channel. Ben Crow is the the guy behind. Uh, Crimson Guitars. Let me go to it. Let me pull it up so you guys can see it so I don't crash this or make it things horrible. Uh, they are doing a build off. Uh, so they're sending out kits to some luthiers, some YouTubers. And uh, so basically how it works is pretty simple. Let me get to it right now. I don't want to share it with you if I could, if you guys don't mind is what I'm trying to get at. Yes, yeah, so let me go to it and then I'll go back here. And I'll do a screen share. Nah. I, I, well, maybe I can't do a screen share. Let me see. I can't. I can't do it because I pulled it up on the wrong screen. 
That's okay. You don't need to see it. You understand. Let me just read it to you. There is the great guitar build off of 2020. How does it work? What's well, simple? There's a couple channels like Dan from Gu Guns and Guitars. There's of course Ben Crow. Uh, there's me. There's uh, there's uh, a bunch of other amazing talented people. Of course, the the guys from Texas Toast Guitars are in this, right? Uh, they got Brad Angove. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. He's got a good channel. I really like it. Tamar is a, a channel. I don't know her channel that well. She does like. Uh, all kinds of builds, not just guitar stuff. Very cool channel. Anyways, here's the idea. The premise behind it is they're going to send us a guitar kit. We got to pick it out. Um, there's a Tele, a Strat, a Les Paul, and a PRS-style guitar. I picked the PRS-style guitar because last year I did the Tele. That's when I did the um, the uh, Beer Caster guitar. And uh, basically how it works is uh, we build the guitar, and then they're going to sell the guitar, uh, and, and they're going to take the proceeds and donate to whatever charity we picked. I picked Guitars for Vets. And uh, so basically, uh, that's it. You get to watch the videos. You get to have some fun. But if you want to join the challenge too and you want to uh, get one of those kits or have some fun, uh, I'll put a link when I index this uh, to their website to buy one of the kits. If you use Know Your Gear 10, the number 10, that gives you 10% off anything you buy from Crimson Guitars. But more, more, well, not more importantly, but also importantly is they're going to give me a uh, uh, affiliate kick or a uh, commission, whatever you call it, a small piece uh, uh, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't come out of your piece. Right. So 10% off to you. And then I get a piece. And what's nice about that is that may help fund uh, some of the stuff that I have to pay out of pocket for the guitar. I don't foresee too much out of pocket. They, they're sending the kit. I might need a few ins and bits and stuff and some other supplies, but uh, that's fine. Right. All goes to the charity. Like I said, it's good. It's a good time. I'm hoping to have a lot of fun. I really want to focus on having fun with this. And if any of you guys are crazy enough to do this, uh, uh, like I said, maybe we'll even have a legal, I'll, I'll we'll join up on Facebook or something and we'll talk about it. Like I said, it'll be fun. Gives me something to do, gives you something to do. Although, to be very fair, I don't really need anything to do right now, but I want to do this, so that's important. And I want to thank the guys at Crimson Guitars for considering me, one, and two, for doing something cool like this. That was really cool. It's really cool to see the companies that try to activate the communities and try to be involved with that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully, you guys will see some crazy cool stuff. I'm excited to see what the other builders do. So, uh, uh, what else? I know you guys are asking a lot of questions. Let me get to them. There was a, a bunch that I saw. And... Uh, and uh, We'll start with, uh, I don't know, whichever random one I grab first. Uh, <laughs> some of you guys are funny. I know you got some super chats. Like I said, let me pin those guys. Um, Peter says he wants to know how my family's doing. I hope everything is well. Uh, my family is, uh, they're doing well. They're very frustrated. Uh, I'm very frustrated. Uh, this is the part of the COVID thing where all the tense frustration is coming. Uh, when I said I spoke, I talked, I spoke, I talked for over three hours this morning. Uh, that is no exaggeration. Three hours straight at highest energy, at highest volume, because it was me re-recording and re-recording and re-recording and re-recording a podcast today because there were so many disturbances in the house and it just couldn't get, for some reason, everybody on the page of I'm recording. <laughs> so it's tough when everybody's home. So when you work from home and everybody's home now, it sure makes everything a little crazy. <laughs> so there you go. That's what's going on with that. But they're fine. Everybody's safe. That's the important part. Uh, okay. What else? What else is going on? What else do you guys got? Let's go. Um, hold on. Hold on. I'm looking for question marks first. I might just switch over to Super Chats because they're right there. Let's do that just because I can I can find them easy and they're fast. And we'll hit them. Maybe you guys got something cool to talk about. Let's see. E.R. Webster says he took a two, the tube amp plunge with the Hughes and Kittner Tube Master 20. Very happy with it. The biggest thing is the dynamic range on volume five can play from three to seven. I really like my I have the uh, the Grandmeister, right? So it's basically the two Meister. My understanding is it's basically the same amp with I have the digital effects. And I had the grand, I had the two Meister 18 before. And it is a great amp. My only complaint about the two Meister 18 is I really wanted reverb and it didn't have it. So uh so the Grand Meister has effects, but to be honest, I use the reverb and a little bit of delay. And sometimes I use the noise gate because it's there and it's easy. Um, but I really like it. In fact, here's what's funny about that amp. 
that amp is a funny amp to me because I don't know if I've ever said this, but when I record that amp records the best, it's the weirdest thing. If all my amps and I, when I play them in the room, I don't, I don't really think like the tube Meister or the grand Meister is being the best sounding amp in the room. I go, Oh yeah, I like this amp for this tone. I like this amp for this. And the grand Meister is a great amp, but it's not my favorite in any category until I record the damn thing. And when I record it, it always blows everything away. I don't know what it is. All the things that I don't love about it, like the little bit of the top end fizz or something like that, you know, like I said, like I said, I like the amp, but there's just something about it. It's not there. It just in recording, it's like perfect. Uh, and I always think of that, like how Marshall's always sound great in a live mix. You know what I mean? Kind of thing with the band. And then at home, you're like, I don't know, is this Marshall the thing I'm looking for? It's funny how, how, if you use the gear for its intended purpose, sometimes it actually works, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Let's be very clear. Most of the stuff that we have is not intended for us just to hang out in our house and play it. Although that's the majority of what's happening now. Bye. That's a good way to the hats. Dad hats. Uh, somebody mentioned I saw it before I got on. Yes, down in the link down below. Dad hats. We have them. White ones and black ones and beanies too. Uh, they're called dad hats, man. I don't know why. It's because uh, I think because dads wear them now. It's funny. I have a funny dad hat story. You know, I was talking about this last week and then I was I was laughing. So uh, when Luis and, and uh, Luis and Alvaro came to visit me, they're the guys from Pedal Pal Effects. They live in Venezuela. They came to visit me a couple years ago. They were in they were in the U.S. and they said, hey, we'll stop in Phoenix and say hi. So he stopped in Phoenix. I picked them up from the... Uh, the uh, uh, hotel and uh, took them to the musical instrument museum when we went and had had uh, food at my favorite place and we just had a good time and they made the joke that i live in arizona and they pictured everybody uh wearing like cowboy hats and cowboy boots and they said you know like the movies and i said yeah and i said what's funny was i remember when i was a kid and so i told them i, I didn't even realize what i was saying where i was driving the car and i said i remember when i was a kid like everybody like everybody my dad's age wore cowboy hats and cow big belt buckles and cowboy boots. I remember that. They were all like a lot of the dads wore that. And I said, now all the dads look like me. <laughs> so I guess they all have vans and stupid hats on, baseball caps. So that's maybe why it's called dad hat. We're the next generation of dads. So uh, dad hats. So dad hats are for sale down below. They're stitched. And for the keen eye, for the keen eye, those that care, the logo has changed. So uh, the logo had to be redesigned to be stitched onto a hat. There you go. There's your fun, fun thing. Shawnee is a Cubs fan, uh, is uh, super chatting. He said, uh, thank you, Shawnee. He says, MXR Distortion Plus or Boss SD1 for the Studio Classic 20 head. I like both of those pedals, but I like the Boss SD1 over the uh, Distortion Plus, although they are so close, I think they're very, very cool, but I prefer the Boss SD-1. Um, but see, so I, I think it's like I said, I don't, I'm looking at my Boss SD-1. I, I don't know what that is. I wish I could articulate with any kind of confidence of why, other than I just have a soft spot for the SD-1. It's my, it's my go-to pedal for a lot of stuff. So there you go. He says, I'm looking, oh, I didn't even finish this question. He says, he's looking for the 80s hard, hard rock metal tone. I've heard both are good suggestions. Yeah, of course. You know, here's the deal. You get that Marshall Classic 20 head and you get yourself a rat pedal. A Here, if you want to teleport yourself, very few things in life can you do like this. You can literally teleport yourself back in time with this stuff you could get yourself a classic 20 head a tube screamer uh a tube screamer or a rat pedal or an sd1 or an mxr distortion plus and literally plug that in there and that's like it's gonna just as soon as you hit the first chord you're gonna be like yep this is what it sounds like you know what i mean that's what that sounded like um because that's what they were using and that's why i said very few things can you actually use the exact stuff that people used in a time frame. And it's uh, great. Even with the reissue stuff, it's very, very close. Um, all right. Uh, let's go to a non super chat since you guys uh, have some super chats and, um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> kit, 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 a Tano nano says heroin dealers are called pushers. See, you know, it's funny. She said that I'm like, yeah, maybe I need to watch more criminal TV shows. You know, those crime shows. I don't watch enough of that stuff. So there you go. There's pushers. Makes totally sense. By the way, I see a lot of comments about this. So I got to say it's uh they're saying happy birthday to Ben Coombs. So it's either happy birthday, Ben Coombs, happy birthday, Ben, or, you know, they just all want to say it's your birthday. Either way, happy birthday. I hope I'm right. <laughs> I hope it's your, your birthday. Um, 
Let's see. Dave Alexander wants to know, Phil, have you tried the Smart Jam feature on your Spark Amp app? Creates your own backing tracks after listening to you. It's awesome. I did. Uh, it works. Uh, I said in the video when I did the review that uh, I would say it it was a little glitchy in the idea that it didn't always work, but it worked majority of the time. Like I said, I think I said it works six out of ten times. It might have been eight out of ten times, um, but it did have a couple issues here, and it could have been user error, I, I, and I, th I think I hopefully clearly stated that in the video that, uh, you know, hey, you know, I'm not an app guy, but so you know, uh, I've been using that amp nonstop. So like I said, I'm not even clear if it has to go back or if it's supposed to stay or what's going on, but I've been playing it nonstop. So there you go. If that's, uh, and, and I'm talking to Positive Grid or have been talking to Positive Grid. I, I've discovered a small issue with the amp, but it's not a huge issue, which is I told you it sounds good with pedals and remember pedals. Sounds great, but my high gain pedals, I'm getting a buzz, uh, like a 60 cycle hum through the amp. Uh, and I don't know if it's my digital power supply. It could be user error. I asked them if they heard anything about it. They hadn't heard that. And uh, but uh, so I'll keep you updated if uh, if it's a, either a con problem continues or if I solve the problem because I know a lot of you guys, as I can see from the comments, uh, are waiting for your amps. So I'm sure that you want to make sure whatever you're waiting for is going to be legit and be right. And so far, it's legit and right. That's the whole thing, right? So. Uh, okay. Okay. Hold on guys. Everybody's jumping around and doing stuff. What else do we got? Uh, we have Dan Smith. Dan Smith says, why does Gibson insist on putting push pull on their less pause? Now I had to spend $200 to strip it down to 500 K pots and orange drops. Uh, I thought that was not the case anymore. Was that, the, is that, am I wrong? Am I misinformed? I thought on the new series, the 2019, uh, Les Pauls, they stopped that. Is it just, is it just in the classic? Remember I got the thin line, uh, the thin line, the light, the ultralight, and it doesn't have push pulls. Um, so I thought they had uh, decided to go back a little bit. And, uh, I have to say I'm at a disadvantage cause I put my hands on very few Gibson guitars, uh, since, since the change of the new company, the one I bought, I bought is the only one I've, I've, I've touched. Uh, I physically seen zero in stores. So, and at the NAMM show, they had them in the booths, but as you can imagine before COVID, I was already not touching that stuff. So, <laughs> so I was like at the NAMM show, thank God I had the insight to go, you know, I don't think I'm going to put my hands on everything. <laughs> so, um, uh, anyways, uh, so yeah, I, I thought that they had done that. Some of you guys that are definitely, you know, more into the, uh, newer model Gibson's that bought one might know some stuff and give feedbacks, but I thought that was an issue, uh, done, but I, if not, yeah, I agree. I'm not, a, I don't get it. You know, I've never really got the whole coil splitting on a Les Paul kind of thing. Uh, it's not something I think if you get a Les Paul, you just, it's, it's like, to me, it's like, it's like Marshall's done this with a couple times with amps, right? The Kerry King Marshall uh, is a JC100. It's a really cool amp. It has noise gate. And the Yngwie Malmsteen uh, amp, which is like a Plexi, has a noise gate and, a, and like a boost and all this cool stuff. And, and and that's cool. You know what I mean? But I think Marshall, when you think Marshall, you want the you just want traditional Marshall. Just maybe smaller amps and bigger amps, but traditional. When I think Gibson, I, I kind of think that way too. But I'm, I'm that way about everything. Like strats. I like humbuckers and strats, but I don't like all the weird switching and stuff on guitars. Uh, not strats. It's, I like, I like to get a guitar like that. Um, this, uh, this, uh, Petrucci behind me, it's got the Paizo system and it's got a little cool, uh, kind of cool, uh, switching systems. And it does a couple of cool little things here and there. And I like that in that kind of guitar. But when I get a traditional guitar, I just want it to be, you know, I don't need, you know, stuff like that. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple for me is how, is how, so I, I think we're kindred spirits, Dan. I think we both just want a traditional Les Paul. Uh, Although I don't get me wrong, I still like the weight relief Les Pauls. As much as some people hate them, I still like it. So, uh, Bill says uh, about the community. This is a great one. Thank you, man. I, I, I'm 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 glad you say that. That that actually uh, that actually feels the best. <laughs> says I enjoy a few channels along those lines. Marty Schwartz is a good dude. He is a good dude. Uh, uh, Marty is absolutely amazing. Um, I was hoping, so you know, uh, we were going to do some content again like we did last year, again this year, but, you know, the world. <laughs> so it's, it's a good dude in person. It seems online. He is a good dude. Um, you know, I'll give Marty his biggest accolade uh, that I can give somebody, a biggest, biggest compliment I can give anyone. 
Uh, and it's very few people I would ever give this big of an, acc uh, a, a, an accolade to, a compliment, if you will, about Marty. Not only is Marty a kind spirit, but what I learned and what I know about Marty hanging out with him is Marty is there's there's people who reserve their opinions. And I am not that person. <laughs> OK, sure. I'll try to put a little chocolate syrup on everything I say if I can, especially if I don't know you. That's why on YouTube, I'm trying to be as polite as I can. I don't know you all. So I don't know, you know, who's going to take what for offense or not. And the more I feel comfortable group of people, the more the filtering what I'm saying comes off. I always say the same. Thing. I have no reason to lie to anybody. But trust me, there's a difference between uh, how how quickly I will speak to a close friend. Trust me, there's no sugarcoating down the road. It's just shut up. What are you talking about? Stop it. Versus somebody else would be like, I don't know. Could you please hold calm down for a second? Right. You know, you 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 I'll call it manners. Maybe I grew up with some manners and I was told. But Marty, he's the kind of person that I really respect in the idea that uh, it Marty reserves his opinions. In other words, he 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 literally has. If you don't have a, a, a polite, if you don't have something good to say, don't say anything other all. And um, and I know people say that, but no one really follows that anymore, right? We all we're all this society is like we like to give opinions on movies. We're like somebody's like, what'd you think of that taco restaurant? I'm like, ah, everything was salty, right? But Marty is the kind of guy. Not only is he a good guy, but he's the while everybody's talking about how salty and how horrible or everything was like that, he's the one who's just staying reserved. And uh, he says his positive thing and it goes on. And uh, and that's a great trait. And I really like that. And I really enjoyed hanging out with him and, and, and not only having a good time with him, but that. And I think maybe because that's his, he's a full time teacher. He teaches people. And maybe that's what he has to you know do. But there you go. That's my compliment. Uh, Shut up. Let's talk says any tips for nut install on an Epiphone Les Paul. Yeah, the nut install on a guitar is always about the removal of the old nut. It's how well you can do that. Take all your time and make sure that's done right. Once the nut is off the guitar, off any guitar, then you're 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 home free. And here's why. You don't need glue, man. Don't worry about that. You got a new nut, stick it on a guitar. You can just stick it on the guitar, put put the two E strings on it, tighten them down so it's so it's has something holding it down. Put the strings on it. You're fine. You should put, uh, you know, some people like two dots of super glue. Some people use a little bit of tight bond. You could put a dot of Elmer's white glue, right? Essentially, all the glue is there for is to hold the nut on when the strings are off. That's all, right? And you understand, uh, and and I have a problem with this. I used to never use super glue. I always used uh, tight bond, just a little two dots of tight bond just to hold it on because it's water malleable. It's pretty easy to to fix and stuff. But most of the luthiers that I know, most of my luthier friends uh, are, uh, will use two dots of super glue. It's very common. So I'll do it sometimes that way too. I, I find out if you notice on the videos, I've done it both ways because I try to show you guys as many different ways of doing something as possible. Um, but uh, that being said, uh, yeah, don't worry about that. Just getting the getting the old nut off is is half is ninety percent of the battle because that's where you're going to damage the guitar, chip the paint, cause issues. So spend your time on that. And then once it off, feel good, man. You got past the hard part. So, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Hold on. Maybe that's why when I'm reading and I'm looking for questions, I should, I should do hold music. Uh, okay. Hold on a second. Um, again, if you have a question or if you just want to make a start a subject to talk about, you can put a question mark first. So, uh, Flasso Mac Attack Attack Econa 96 says, <laughs> what's the most expensive guitar I own or have played? Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, played is silly because I go to the NAMM show. Like I picked up $125,000 Martin. Why? Because, uh, they let me. So I picked it up and I strummed it. I'm like, yep. Yeah. And I put it on the wall. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. So to probably that, something like that, some $100,000 guitar, some stupid gold guitar. It's always going to be, here's the deal. The expensive guitar thing is always going to be some silly, silly thing I picked up at NAMM show for that purpose, right? You look at the price, $98,000. <laughs> You're like, I got to touch that. The problem is it was funny the first time you do it, which the first time I did it was probably like 2005. And then, and then, 
you do it so many times after that that it, now when you're asking me, I'm like, I can't remember because I've like Ritter bases, you know, I mean, there's some stuff that gets crazy expensive. So that's that's probably the most expensive stuff. Um, the uh, uh, most expensive guitar I own. That's a good question. Uh, sadly enough, I would bet if I was going to bet uh, that the most expensive guitar I own is a Framus. Um, in fact, the most expensive guitar I own is not even a guitar. It's a bass. It's my Warwick. And then after the Warwick, it's a Framus. And then I will, and like I said, I've said this many times. Anytime you guys ask me stuff, I'll tell you. I got the heck. I don't have any reason to hold anything back. Um, my most expensive guitars I own are Framuses and Warwicks, and they're, they, I did not pay anything close to what their their street price are. They, of course, gave me a, a deal. They gave me a, a give me a deal. So, um, and that's going to be the problem with most of my guitars. I, I buy a deal. I bought a guitar today, by the way, everybody. That's how I woke up this day. I woke up today. I didn't even make coffee and I bought a guitar. And, uh, and, uh, let me tell you, this is a funny story. See, so segue into this, uh, guitar that I bought. Um, the tone King, because it comes up sometimes, man, hanging out with a tone King sometimes when you go, it's like hanging out with another, you know, drug addict. It's maybe not the best person to have on your texting profile. Um, I woke up this morning and um, and I was making coffee as I do. Right. And I have that coffee maker that, you know, grinds the beans fresh. And so I'm set, setting this up and my phone chimes and it's the Tone King. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. Why is he texting me? And it's a picture of a, a, a neon yellow BC Rich gunslinger. And he's like, this just went on reverb. You've been saying you want to, since I probably met him, I tell everybody this, I've always wanted a Beast Rich Gunslinger. It's one of the guitars I've never owned. The very first, uh, very first guitar I ever wanted was a BC Rich Gunslinger. Okay. So I'm going to tell you the story. I, I hope you guys enjoy it <laughs> because, uh, and I hope the younger audience learns from it. So when I, the, how I learned about guitar was simple. My friend got a guitar. Right. I'd never seen anybody with a guitar before. You know, I mean, I, it was not in my radar. Right. A as an age, uh, my friend got a guitar and I was like, oh, electric guitar. And then I was into Motley Crue at the time. But I was in. I really love Nikki Six. I didn't know Nikki Six was a bass player. I thought he was a guitar player. So I was like, oh, I want to play guitar. Nikki Six plays guitar. <laughs> there you go. So. Here goes. Here's what gets funny. What's funny was my friend not only got a guitar, he got guitar lessons at a music store a couple blocks from our house. So I went to with him after school to his lesson and I walked in the music store and there I saw the very first guitar that I ever fell in love with. And remember, I wasn't playing guitar or anything. And uh, literally, no joke, just out of like, just out of, like out of the Wayne's World movies and out of like Stranger Than Fiction, I literally was, that was a uh, little teenage Phil McKnight walking into a music store and I saw this guitar and here's what it was. It was a 1988, because that was the year, 1988 BC Rich Gunslinger one pickup reverse headstock in pearl white. And I saw it and I just, I don't know what it is to this day. I could not stop looking at it for probably just a 30 minute lesson. I probably stared at this guitar and I decided right then and right there, I need a guitar. And I knew that my parents would never buy me a guitar. So I was a crafty little child. <laughs> So here's how I got a guitar. Not that guitar, but a guitar. I went to the counter that day. This is a true story. And I bought a set of drumsticks. And I went home that day and I told my mother proudly and loudly that I am going to be a drummer. And then because the counter in my in my kitchen in my home where my, my mom would cook, you would sit at the bar at the counter at the at the at where the kitchen is. I sat there and drummed like a crazy person like this and told her every day. Now I feel like months for me, it was probably like three days. She probably broke after three days. And I was like, I'm going to be a drummer. I want a drum. Get me a drum set. How do I become a drummer? I want to be a drummer. Get me a drum set. And, uh, and then when I felt like it was right, the timing was right. When I felt like my mom's nerve was down to the last sliver before she probably would stab me. I said, I oh, maybe I just get to do guitar. I'll do guitar. How about guitar? So I got, that's how I got the cheap JV player guitar. Um, but <laughs> that's how I convinced the, my mom to let me, uh, have but what's funny about this was my whole life. I've always wanted to be Rich gunslinger and I just, I'd never seen them. So tone King sent me one today was seven fifty, And of course, and of course, which is a great price for the guitar. Uh, it, but the problem was they had or best offer. So instead of buying it, 
I just put an offer for 700 bucks, sent Tonking a message going, and just put an offer on it, which means I'm probably going to lose it. Somebody's going to probably snake it while I'm putting the offer. But luckily for me, the person responded right away, took my offer. So now I have a yellow, I'll review it, a yellow BC Rich Gunslinger coming. It'll be my first, uh, no, it's my second BC Rich I've ever owned. I had a BC Rich uh, 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 base, uh, uh, Mockingbird base. And uh, yes, Mockingbird base. Uh, so I don't think I've ever owned a physically owned a BC Rich guitar. I've had some in my store, you know what I mean? But I've never physically had one in my personal you know, collection of guitars. I'm very excited about this. First one, USA made and uh, yellow. Very cool. Very excited about this. And um, like I said, that's how I woke up today. I bought a guitar. <laughs> it's not the worst way to start a day, I guess. Although, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, trolls something. <laughs> <laughs> Trolls to turn her name and then said it wouldn't be so funny if she actually bought you a drum set, would it? No, but I mean, you know, come on, you know, your parents, right? I knew my mom, my mom would just let me tell you, there was no way I was ever getting a drum set. Uh, by the way, uh, I don't know if you've ever had that moment in your life with your uh, for now, I'm gonna talk that's that was for the younger audience, so they know how to trick their parents into things. This is for the older audience. Did you ever have a point in your life? Uh, mine was like 32 years old, uh, where you finally come clean and tell your parents all the crap you did that they didn't know about. And, and, in my experience, uh, it usually when my friends had done this, the, their parents were always like, yeah, we knew, we knew in my case, my mom was like, what, what? <laughs> Every time, everything I said, oh, and by the way, I never wanted to play drums. That was all a trick to guitar. Like my mom was like, shocked i must have I, I like i said i was impressed how well i pulled all that off so all right i've never you know, like i said it was cool that tells you the commitment i had to wanting a guitar i guess all right okay let's do we get some let me flip screens right here and go to the other side and grab some questions and stuff now that you let me entertain telling you a story of my youth uh what do we got we got uh eddie Eddie, Eddie, I want half Eddie. Literally, it's E dash D D D E. That's why I see Eddie, Eddie. Then he, uh, that's old school. Uh, he said, just for some beer funds for you to stay sane, I need to knock off the beer. During the COVID, I've been drinking more than I've ever drank in my life. And every friend, except for probably two, has been in concurring with what I said. Uh, it's, I think, I uh, yes. So I've been actually tapering off the last couple of days, being have, um, and none. I'd like, I got to go back to zero um, at, at all because, uh, yeah, this has been the worst, uh, worst habit because there's nowhere to go. So on a Saturday, you're like, oh, let's go. I can't go anywhere. I guess I'll just drink. What a, what a great idea. <laughs> so, all right. Um, yeah. And so, you know, so I can write them out. Uh, eventually I'll get Ralph to come on. We'll do a bonus Saturday thing. I, I I've decided we'll, we'll just do Ralph, do a bonus one. And, um, what's funny is, uh, even Ralph who doesn't drink has been drinking lately. So, you know, all right. Uh, Tranitaurus stories, Rex <laughs> says, uh, Hey Phil, how's it going tonight? Question mark. Well, I don't know. What are you, what are you doing? You busy? It's a great, it's a weird way to start a question. Uh, what, how, how's it going tonight? It's going, it's going good. How's it going with you? Got any recommendations for maintaining a Jatoba fretboard? Oh, my Ibanez RG621 PB has one. Thank you. Um, no, not nothing I, Nothing that I think you have to do. Any of those crazier woods like that, I, I don't know of anything you have to do anything special to. So there you go. Uh, you know, here's a question I have. Isn't this crazy? Um, does Ibanez have recommended... To, I don't think they have a page on their website that gives you recommendations for what to do with woods. You know what? That's a great question in the core of it. Maybe I could reach out to somebody like Music Nomad or somebody who's a real, you know, right, and try to see if we can get a reference guide and maybe do a quick little video of like all the different kinds of woods and then what what are the best stuff to do those woods. And it would be nice as like a one source all video. You know, here's 50 different kinds of woods and what you should use for them from a company that or somebody who knows. You know what I mean? That'd be really nice, the guitar community. So, all right, let me let me see if I can cook something on a cup. That's a great question. Uh, Marco says, last week I've talked about the more red truck. Uh, it's a pedal station. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, I remember we talked about the pedal truck. I was going to index, but then we didn't index because, you know, the internet exploded. Uh, Neil Conway did a super chat for no reason. Thank you, buddy. I just want to say thank you for that. Then he did a super chat because I think what happened was he did a super chat and just question in post. So I appreciate you doing it twice. Uh, uh, I, it's nice of you. Uh, it says, my 90s Fender HR DeVille, Hot Rod uh, DeVille 410 is a smidge loud for my RV. Yes. Uh, what about the Milkman amp or direct out to DAW? Um, yes, but you can. Okay. So your options are super easy with that amp. Um, your HR DeVille, you can switch out that potentiometer, the volume and take the linear and go to a tapered. That's, that's a little much for me, but it's not a hard thing to do. You can pretty, you could do it, especially in that amp where the back panel comes off. You can do it without killing yourself as long as you take some time and make sure you don't touch any of the capacitors and stuff. But before I just give you that advice, let me just tell you, I did do a video and it does work. If you put a 12 AT7 or a 12 AU7 in the V1 spot of that amp, that will tame the beast a lot too. And then of course you can always use it. Those were all tamed the beast uh, as well. So that's some suggestions right there. A lot cheaper than getting a milkman amp uh, with a direct out to DAW. But if you're looking for a reason to get a milkman amp and uh, just tell your wife or significant other that I said, yeah, you need that. <laughs> just when you show her the clip, just go to the part where I go, yeah, you definitely here. I'll help you out. Go to whatever minute this is, three, 35 minutes and 58 seconds. Ready? You totally need to buy a Milkman amp. That's the only way you're going to get the tone right in that RV. Okay, just take her to that part and then stop. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> this is from, da you guys are just obnoxious with, with these sign-ons. Da 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 that guy, Noah. <laughs> all phonetics, huh? That guy, Noah. Brondo has what plants crave. That guy Noah uh, says, "Hey Phil, I just picked up a PRS 22. If you guys don't know what that is, that's a uh, PRS a custom 22 with a piezo system, uh, piazzo piazzo system. It's Italian, I don't know. Piazzo system, piazzo Pia piazzo piezo. <laughs> I'm just doing that to mess with people. Piazzo system. It says, uh, what are your thoughts on the P22 other than uh, Piezo equipped PRS guitars? I love the Piezo equipped PRS guitars. I, I think the hollow body twos nail it. I think he's got a different sound. It's funny. He's using basically the same system as everybody else, but for some reason, those guitars have a fatter, crazier sound than the normal Piezo system. And I've said this before. My favorite Piezo system is the Music Man system. That's my favorite. The PRS one though is very unique. I really want... Uh, a piezo system prs guitar i want a hollow body too they're just like six billion seven trillion dollars some crazy number like that they're literally the 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 the, the craziest price ones um but uh that being said the p22 is a great guitar um only thing with me is i really lean towards the pattern thin necks on prs which the hollow body 2 wouldn't have as well and the p22 doesn't have a pattern thin neck it has the pattern regular neck it came standard with that so so but a very cool guitar it's got a cool thing that's my thoughts on that. Richard did a super chat for no reason. Let me hop over to the non-super chats and drink water at the same time. Maybe I need to learn how to drink water and answer questions. This could go by faster. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> Ryan, uh, Six Cycle Hum says he wants a warlock. Now, I know he's probably being sarcastic, although it could be the first surf guy to want a warlock. However, I think there was a time. Some of you guys are stuck on it. Good for you. Like there was a time where I think uh, anyone over the age of 40 wanted a warlock. Right. <laughs> right? And, and then like nobody now wants one. But there's trust me right now watching there's 708 right now by just the, the law of averages. There's two or three of you dudes like I got my warlock, buddy, and you love it and good for you because it was a guitar that just for some reason when i saw it the first time i went that is amazing that's a battle axe and a guitar it's great but at some point you're just like i don't know <laughs> right you just lose it um so uh <laughs> so there you go but the warlock is a cool guitar that's what i said the the if i didn't get the gunslinger i i, I really wanted a warlock the problem with the warlock for me is the warlock i would get is the wrong warlock. I would get the hot pink warlock. And that's like the poison era of warlocks. That's not the cool warlock, but that's the one I want. Uh, the cool warlock is like, you know, the black ones, like, you know, Blackie Lawless and stuff. Those are the cool, that's the coolest era stuff. You know, Motley Crue, you know, right? Cool, 
warlocks you know that when i think of kiss and all that stuff i think of those pointy kind of cool guitars then but for some reason i'm just like oh if i get one every time i see one i go oh i should get the pink one and then i go no one is gonna think that's cool no one just me <laughs> and it's important that people think my guitar is cool i guess <laughs> meta name says are that many people into molly crew yeah i guess they they have a lot of albums they, they were my first you know, like real band. They were my first concert I ever went to was Motley Crue. Um, Brian S. I think you guys, if, it's been a while since we talked about this. Brian S. Uh, not when I told him that the, the Dr. Feel Good was my first concert ever, Motley Crue. Brian S. Uh, from the channel Live Wires. Uh, he was a limo driver at the time and he drove Nikki Six at that time. And he gave me a pick. It's Nikki Six's pick from that tour. It says the mother effing, it's, it's actually says it though mother effing greatest tour of all time or whatever pick and it's cool it's in my it's framed in a little pick thing in my my other room so um so that was cool uh do 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 do, do. what else do we got Yeah, it says, I'm not old, I'm vintage. I know a lot of people still love Motley Crue. You know, I'm, I've seen Motley Crue like three, four times. Here's the thing. I love them still, but geez, is it tough to watch them. Um, Vince Neil just gets more out of breath each time. It's tough, right? It's tough. We all get older, so the thing happens to us all. So. Um, all right. What else do we got? Uh, let's look for a question. Like I said, if you have a question or a comment you want to talk about, I can, I can talk about, I try to stick with guitars though. <laughs> okay. Hold on. I know I got some super chats pinned, so let me just not hold those off. Let me hit those real quick. Uh, I hate the new screens cause I have to, uh, I have to re refresh it every time to see what you guys put. Um, this is music therapy. Laz says, hold on. Here's for a beer to raise to Ben Coombs for his birthday. Like Ferris Bill, here's recovering well <laughs> and appreciates all your support. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll do that tonight. I'll drink a beer. To Yeah, I was not going to drink one. And, and now, now because of Ben Coombs' birthday, I'm going to drink one. That's, that's well, at least what I'll explain. explain to my wife. I'll cut to this part. And say like, oh, I will definitely drink a... <laughs> To the, all right, Voodoo Fist says, I bought a U Charvel with a hardtail. It is hidden. It has the hidden truss rod. I hate that. That was the thing that drove me nuts when, when Fender started reissuing the, the Charvels and, and they did the, the crap where you have to take off the neck to adjust the truss rod. It sucks, man. It takes all the fun out of it. Um, okay. Oh, hold on. Now that I'm on my tear, let's go. Uh, is there a way to adjust it without having to remove the screws in the neck? No. The, but I can tell you the fastest way I do it. The fastest way to adjust that guitar is loosen the strings, right? Just loosen them real fast, okay? Don't get crazy. Just loosen enough to where, you know, you have slack on all the strings. Capo the 12th fret, then take the screws off, then lift the neck up while it's sitting on a soft pad or something. Tighten the truss rod or loosen the truss rod, quarter turns, whatever, whatever. You, you got to kind of guesstimate this, right? Like, because you're like, okay, bending on the curve and stuff. If it looks dramatic, do a turn or two. If it looks subtle, do a quarter turn. Put the neck back on, cinch up the screws. Tighten up the strings, take the capo off, and play. It's the fastest system I've learned to do. That's a pretty fast system. That way uh, you don't have to mess with stuff. But always capo the, the strings, even if it has locking keys. Just capo at the 12th fret. See if you're enough. And if you have one of those kind of adjustable capos, just loosen the tension on the capo so it's the lightest. But I'll use the capo or the Kaiser capos, and they work fine too. Uh, no issues. I've never scarred a fret or anything like that. Nothing wacky. So that's a faster way to do it. But yeah, it's the stupidity of it, right? I don't know why they did that. I don't know what the logic of that is. It's like, hey, you know the super strats? Let's make them like Fender made when he had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> so, Grumpy Mike, hey Grumpy Mike, how's it going? He says, just saying hi and why not? Would uh, would like to know if you have any thoughts on the Marshall Origin Fifty? Um, yeah, I've played the Origin Fifty and the Origin Twenty. I liked it, um, especially now they're for a song, right? You can find them for a good deal. Uh, new, I see the new prices are pretty good, so I would imagine used price is pretty fair. Um, it's a pretty good amp. Only 
only cr thing I ever heard negative was Robert Baker once mentioned, I guess the effects loop doesn't work. Uh, I saw that somewhere. He was mentioned that on a video and then I was like, Oh, that's interesting. I don't know if that's was his particular one or a series or, or what have you, but that's the only negative I've ever heard. Other than that, I thought they sounded great. Take pedals. Well, it's cool. I have the Marshall 2061 and you know, at this point in the collection, it makes sense to have that amp, but you know, if I was, if I had my wits about me, I'd get the origin. I think the origin, I bet you the origins, especially if you use a, a overdrive pedal and stuff, probably do it just as good as any of the higher price Marshall stuff. So Rick B says, why use the capo? You want a capo with the 12 frets. So the strings don't go all crazy on you and chip the nut and do anything. It just it makes it easier that way. If you don't have locking keys, so we're sorry, guys. So, you know, we're all jumping back to the whole Charvel with the take off the neck thing. If you have a guitar, we have to take off the neck to address the truss rod. If you don't have locking keys, you absolutely need to loosen the strings so that they don't come out of the tuning keys, loosen them just enough and then capo. And then if you want to finish loosening and pulling, you know, pull them loose, that's fine. Um, and then take the neck off, make the adjustment, put the neck back on. If you have locking keys, I would still do it just because it's a faster, easier process. And even with the locking keys, what you really don't want is you don't want the strings because sometimes when you're not paying attention, you put the neck back on. Now the strings have crossed over to different parts, slot, slots in the nut. The issue that you have that you're worried about is that whenever you do that, the chance of the strings catching a corner of the nut and chipping it off. You ever get a guitar and there's like a chip missing off the like the, the part, one of the slots of the nut or the corner. A lot of times that's from that crap. The strings get there. Somebody's tightening up a string and it's not on, on the slot and it snaps in and stuff. I'm very sensitive to chipping a guitar nut because no matter how well you, how well and how fast you repair guitars, the nut is going to take you the most amount of time to fix. So if you damage that while doing something else, you've just doubled your work time and you have to deal with that. And that's if you're like me and you have blanks and all kinds of nut blanks and, and, and prefab nuts available to you in trays. You know, I can just grab one. A lot of you guys would be like, I got to go on Amazon or somewhere and find one. So that's why you do that. Um, Charles says, I want a round neck, res uh, round neck resonator guitar. Only type I don't already own. Should I get a used... Uh, Paul Beard, uh, where do I find info? You know, I'm not a big, I, I'm not a big resonator guy. I don't know much about them. Um, you know, I'm not a slide player. That's the, that's the problem. So I don't know. Uh, if you, it, here's the deal. You're saying you want one cause you don't already own one. Uh, have you tried one? That's one of those things. Like I would definitely look at some of the, there's a, a brand that makes uh, really cool ones. Johnson is a brand that makes them. So here's the thought. Here's the thing I'm working with resonator guitars. So, you know, uh, the great thing about those guitars is the action is jacked up high. They're not about how great they play. So cheap ones are cool right? Cheap ones. And some of the cheaper ones, they have like a gnarly, weird, hollow nasal tone. That's cool. Like I said, that's one of those cool guitars that, you know, uh, when you, when you want to buy one, you don't have to worry about buying the nicest one. You can get yourself one of those cheapy ones and they're no, no one's brand conscious. So if it's not that that's it matters, you right. No one's, no one, I think here is a cork sniffer like, Hey, I got to have the best. But if you do, no one cares about it. If it's, resonator brand for the most part so something like that and like i said depends on how charles how serious you're about it if you're really serious about this and you want to buy it right you know buy a better quality i'm not familiar with paul beard i'm not so again it's not my not something i've run across but but that's my two cents for what it's worth bk did a super chat for no reason thank you buddy um and this one comes from manny manny says will you be trying to check out the Tech 21 Fly Rig range, hoping you and your family stay safe. Thank you, man. I appreciate the thoughts for my family as well. Hope you and your family are also safe and well. Uh, I have tried one of the Fly Rigs before. I think I tried the original one, and then I tried the uh, uh, the artist one. Who's the artist? Why can't I think of his name? Richie Kotzen. I tried the Richie Kotzen one. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, but, you know, I, I had no, no, no plans to try them out. If you're looking for any kind of... Uh, you know, any recommendations on them? The ones I tried were cool. They were really cool. They were really small and, and cool for that. So it's kind of like a weird thing to talk about now. Travel rigs, right? Fly rigs. Where are you going? Where are you going, Manny? You're going nowhere, buddy. <laughs> no one's going anywhere right now. So like, hey, I need a I need a small rig to take on the plane. <laughs> so it's kind of a weird thought. It's funny you brought that up just because it kind of reminded me like, yeah, where are we all going? So uh 
Uh, let's see. Uh, hold on. I see Tim's super chat. Give me a second, Tim. Let me hit some non-quick super chats and see what you guys are talking about on the main the main chat. Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, Carlos uh, asked me, he's like, hey, Philip, can you please give me some, uh, give some info about Japanese Fender Strats? Someone's selling me a used, obviously 2011 Strat. I can't find info on the internet about it. Yeah, they get a little tricky because see, the problem with Fender and Japan is there's, there's two kinds in my mindset. There's two kinds of Fender Japan, right? There's Fender Japan from the late '80s when Fender was uh, like contracting a lot of Japanese guitars for the U.S. and you see a lot of that stuff. And then there's now the current Fender Japan, uh, where I'll say is from let's say just to safely say it from the late '90s, where most of the Japanese guitars that are Fender Japanese guitars are made just for the Japanese market. There are exceptions that come into the U.S. Right? The new heavy metal Strats are Japanese guitars and they're sold in the U.S. But Japan gets its own line of guitars guitars if you can do it it's tough sometimes i used to do it when i was bored you could go online and find the fender japan fender japan site and look at the fender guitars just for japan it's all in japanese so uh which is probably makes sense because it's fender japan it would be weirder if it was like in german or something right so um but <laughs> but anyways um and you can see there's so many models that are just not going to be available uh, and you're not going to see. So that's where it gets a little tricky where you want to be a little savvy. You want to learn as much as you can about Japanese guitars, and how to identify them. Uh, and uh, there's tons of resources for that. So don't look for your guitar. Look for the resources. That's the piece of advice I'm going to give you. If you can't find your guitar that you're looking for, like this guy's trying to sell you a guitar. You can't find anything about that specific, specific guitar. Go online and just type in like how to read Japanese Fender serial numbers, how, what to look for type. That's what you want your search as. You're looking for the things. There's tails, like a tail, like a, you know, when you're, you're, poker friends you have a tail like your face there's tails on the guitars that help you tell where, where if they're a legitimate Jap japanese guitar especially in the fender realm where i've said this before a lot of fender guitars a lot of japanese american mexican uh fender guitars are all cannibalized and switch parts and there's gonna you know and people love to put a Japanese part on another guitar to tell you that Japanese, I love to put American part on another guitar to tell you it's American made PR or uh, fender. So it gets a little tricky. So I understand your apprehension. Uh, you know what I mean? So make your best judgment guess on that. Um, you know, I would love to do how to figure out a ja uh, Japan uh, fender uh, guitar video. Maybe that's something I would do, but I would really like, I think I have some friends that are really great resources on that right now. It's impossible because we can't work together because COVID, but maybe when, when the time opens up a little bit, maybe I can, maybe that's a cool video to, to talk about and do. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Hold on a second. Hold on one second. Okay. Uh, what else do we got? We have another question. I'm sure we do. Um, hold on. I just see where I, I messed up. It jumped. Okay. We have. All right. Hold on. Trant Trantosaurus Rex. Did a, I just want to make sure I understand the question. Says, I just wanted to greet you before my question. Okay. Oh, cool. Cool. Uh, I, I'm well tonight. Uh, Ivanez didn't have much info beyond the guitar specs. Oh, nice. So he's talking about the wood, the Jato Jatoba, whatever is that, how you say it. Then, um, let me, I just don't want to tell you off the cuff because I'm trying to do off memory and I'm just thinking, I don't, I, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will make sure we'll follow up next week. I will make sure I'll index it. I'll index this and then maybe I'll put a link to the index or if not, I'll, I'll follow up next week. We can talk about that and I'll, I'll tell you what I, what I find. Um, so I appreciate you, uh, uh doing the super chat and we'll see if we can get the right answer for you. Um, Hold on a second. I'm having trouble finding this. Okay. Um, Neil Conway. Um, Neil Conway just did a super chat for the milkman advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Chuck M. Music says, I'm 37 and there is still stuff my mom doesn't know. Oh, man. So, yeah. So you're obviously going to wait. 
Uh, sorry if you already talk about this. Came on late. What do you think of the new GHS fuzz pedals? I ordered the Bender. I just seen all I've seen is the 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 ones on Reverb. You know, I saw the little list of them, and then uh, one YouTube channel that I subscribed to. I saw that they posted a picture that they were doing all like five or six of them or whatever the number was. But I I put it a lot of that stuff. I just put in the pen thing so I can look at it later. But I've been so busy no no time to watch the videos um so i haven't tried any but i like the idea right he's just taking all the classic fuzz and stuff he always seems to come up with really cool ideas fresh ideas i think that's where jhs is kind of lives in it's it's uh smart marketing right because they know how to take and, and find stuff that they he's got his pulse on the pedal market and that's very very apparent in his channel in his pedals he's very smart in in that realm and uh, obviously makes good stuff so it sounds good I actually, to be honest, I, the pedal I really want was the Paul Gilbert pedal, but I just haven't pulled the trigger. Uh, Marco says, Marco says, I just knew about Molly crew because Tommy Lee was Pamela Anderson's boyfriend. And I thought, uh, who took my girl? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? I think this is again, how about this, Marco? I remember Tommy Lee from Heather Locklear. Remember Heather Locklear? She was before Pamela, right? See, to me, Pamela, oh, well, let's start a fight. To me, Pamela was a step down from Heather Locklear, right? Pamela was, uh, she was, she was pretty. She was the stripper pretty. Heather Locklear was that, like, you know, Farrah Fawcett, breathtaking kind of pretty, you know, to me was like the, you know, so that's, that's the difference for me. So, I mean, that's, that's what I, when I think of Tommy Lee, I think of Heather Locklear. So there you go. <laughs> so, and, and it's okay. We could talk about that because he's, He's a drummer and that still does none of this makes sense, but I just want to say Heather Locklear. Tony MG says high string, my high string E string. He's high E string gets stuck under the fret wire end of uh, several frets and uh, any easy and cheap fix. Uh, they, yes, there is. Uh, it's a guitar kit for fun, mainly hammering. And uh, yes. So here's what I would suggest. There's a couple things you can do for those. It depends on the type of fretboard you have and the guitar. So, what I would do to address that, if it was rosewood fretboard, um, I might look at them and tap them to see if they've they've lifted a little bit and tapped them in back in. Okay, if it's maple, um, the odds of it really coming out loose is not likely, but I would also look at that as an option. But I'd be very careful if I tap those because if there's any kind of finish on that uh, maple fretboard, you would get damage. Um, but uh, the easiest way to do it is take one of the cuticle files or any of those uh, the the. Stuart McDonald uh, cuticle looking file that I like, the sand file, or any of the uh, micro mesh, and just go ahead and lightly just take those barbs off. That's what's happened. The frets have either lifted a little bit or they poked out a little bit. Either way, you got a little bit of a barb and the string's catching under the barb. And its string is so small, the barb does not have to have much lip on it at all to catch that high E string. So uh, just go ahead and take that off. You can just use an actual a cuticle file and stuff. Um, you know, the saying, use what you got. But again, keep in mind, if you're going to use anything other than a standard kind of professional type tool, take, take, for, take understand that you're going to possibly do some extra damage to your guitar or mark your guitar. But if your guitar is inexpensive and it's a player guitar, you, may, you don't have to worry about that. If it's a really a guitar you care about and you really don't want to make any, sure there's any damage, uh, then like I said, buy the right tool. I really like the, the one from Stu Mac. Um, it, it's, it sucks because it's like that $10 shipping thing kills it. Right. Cause it's like a $5 thing, but then it's $10 in shipping. So, um, you know, I mean, I don't know if anyone find, found an alternative online. I, I, I trust me. If there was anything, if I had any internet power in the world, I'd figure out how to get Stu Mac to figure out how to get their shipping under 10 bucks for small, cheap stuff that you could stick in envelopes. It's the, it's the frustration thing, right? Like, I don't know why they don't do like a 10 things that you can just get fast, ch cheap shipping on. <laughs> right. Cause the, cause there's a couple of things that I recommend that are really great that you can buy for like six bucks, but then the $10 shipping kills it. Um, so Tony to, to, to the point, uh, that's what I would do. I have a couple of videos on that, uh, the barb things, and I've used that tool, that, that tool, uh, many times that little file. So, uh, I'll link in the index, a link to one of the videos where I do that. Uh, okay. So BK says, maybe this was asked already, but I forgot. That's okay. Uh, how do you like your Wolfgang? Uh, have you tried, have you tried the EVH PV and music man ones is the question. And, uh, the answer 
is uh yes i've tried all the pv i've all pv i've tried all the wolfgangs and i i i've never owned the music man ones i've again it's one of those things i've had one come through the store i had one of the purple ones that i turned all green if you guys know anything about the uh, music man wolfgangs you know that's like the big thing for them the purple turn green um i want a music man if i could have a wolfgang i would want to have a music man in either purple or red like like i pit you know and that's what i want um, so I couldn't do that. So I got the PB one in purple. Now, so, you know, the PB one, which is behind my head in purple, it looks black, but it's purple. Uh, I got that one because, um, it's the one that I, I just wanted that the one that the way it looks. And, um, and, uh, to be honest with you has nothing, obviously it was pre COVID and stuff. I just feel like a lot of these American made guitars like PVs and stuff are, are going to, as the uh, availability keeps continuing to go down the prices are going to firm and stay the same. So it's again, I didn't buy it for an investment. I just know that I, I wanted it and it's only going to cost me more later. So I might as well get it. I like it. I'm going to review it. In fact, I have a video that I have planned to queue up and do. I wanted to do this. I don't know how you guys will take this, how well they'll do as videos, but a lot right now I'm really focused on trying to do content that makes me kind of happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And hope that you guys find some joy in this too. I want to do some reviews of some stuff that obviously like that you can't, you can't buy, you can't, it, they don't make it anymore, but just to talk about it, talk about that guitar and uh, talk about some cool stuff. So obviously I like it. Um, but so, you know, playability wise, I think I like the new, uh, out of all the three guitars, I want the music man the most, but I actually prefer the EVH neck the most. I don't know why that is. I just like the shape of it. it feels good. Music man ones are really tiny necks. The PV ones are like chunky necks a little bit. It's kind of weird. And, but it's pretty cool. And uh, mine's modded a little bit. So I'll share that in the review and you definitely cinched it for me. So I'll definitely do the video now that you've brought that up. Um, and again, the screen doesn't let me see it unless I refresh it. And it's definitely YouTube. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's just the way the new way they have this stuff. Um, okay, uh, D David says uh, thinking about getting a couple of Harley Bentons, a bass, and a single cut 550. Am I making a mistake? Are there better options uh, for similar price? Well, I'm glad you said similar price because that's the thing. Uh, Harley Benton guitars are 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 popular because there are a lot of guitar for a little bit of money. That's basically it. And everything I've picked up that, especially the more inexpensive, the the less that Harley Benton costs, the, the more it seems to be impressive, right? Uh, like when I pick one up at four or $500, I think, well, there's a lot, I can buy guitars that are four or $500. This is good. When I pick one at 200 bucks, I'm like, I don't know, man, 200 bucks. This is really good guitar. Um, so, so to answer your question, um, are you making a mistake? Th that's a tough question in the idea of, you're talking about regret, right? If you buy these, will you regret the purchase? And uh, this is the thing I will tell you. You will not re ever regret buying quality. So keep that in mind. If you want to buy them because you have a little disposable co income right now, disposable money, they look fun. Trust me, they are. They, You can buy a couple guitars and have some good times and put some joy in your life for a little bit of scratch. Hey, man, you made the money. You should enjoy it. However, if you're asking me, you know, should you hold it off and wait and buy something a little bit nicer? Um, it, you will get more, you will get a longer gratification from buying something you truly want. That's, you know what I mean? Because again, you won't, you won't regret buying quality. However, you won't, I'm not warning you. I'm not cautioning you not to waste your money on Harley Benton like it's junk or anything. I'm just saying it's good stuff. You'll get good value for your money. So there you go. If that's as easy as it is for you, it's great. So, um, anybody who has a collection of guitars like what I have behind me now that's sane on the planet Earth, which, you know, will tell you that all these guitars that you, you can buy for two and three, four hundred dollars are freaking amazing, right? I would be a different collector today if I started today. So you guys that are collecting guitars today, I would be different. I would be a different collector. When I started upgrading my collection, because I'm like everybody else, I started with a, an expensive guitars and I kind of, you know, trade and sell and buy and you keep working your way to this, to the point where you get a guitar that feels good. Um, and now I feel like I get a guitar that feels good for 300 bucks. It doesn't, it's not my favorite guitar in the world because now I have a different focus in my collection. I want unique. I want something that feels a little different than everybody else has. Um, cause it's just, you know, it's, uh, you get, you get, it's old hat. You get bored with the same old, same old, right? So, uh, 
so to answer your question, I would do it if you want to, but like I said, if you want, if you've got some caution in your mind, thinking maybe you should hold out and get something nicer, I don't think you'll regret that either by any means. Uh, and by the way, David, I think you super chatted me twice on that, but that's okay. I mean, uh, so I appreciate it is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Tim, Tim Farnsworth. What's up, Tim? He says, they're putting my Patreon design shirt on the, on the website. Um, you know, so remember I was telling you about the cool shirt with the coffee cup? Uh, that was Tim's shirt. Um, and Tim has like, I think he has every know your gear coffee cup. Uh, and, and, uh, you have, I hope you have one. You should have one that no one has, right. Or something like that. Didn't my wife make you a special one? Uh, she was supposed to. So if she didn't rat her out, tell me. She's usually pretty good at getting stuff done like that. But I thought she was doing something for you special, like a special, uh, mug. If that didn't happen, trust me, let me know. Because in my world, it gets a little chaotic with the kids and the life and stuff, but everything gets done eventually. <laughs> right. Um, and, uh, so anyway, so I said that, I'm sorry, I didn't even finish the rest of what he said. He said, I had every mug. Oh, he's just saying that he's like, I have every mug you put out. So Shauna designed my gift mug using a mug, my PRS metallic purple as oh, see, I didn't even read it. I just went on a tirade. Hey, at least I knew it. That's cool, right? See, I knew the story. I knew it was right. Um, and uh, and so he goes, now I get the tea. Oh, so sh you didn't get the t-shirt done? You just got the mug done? You didn't have the shirt? That's cool. That's funny. Uh, so that's cool. Did You know what? Contact me. If you haven't bought the shirt, contact me about the shirt. I have, uh, I have something. I, it would be cool. So Tim, uh, email me, but keep in mind, I want to be slow to email on the, I always tell you guys, sometimes when I tell you guys to email me on Friday, remember I kind of, and I do stuff for the weekend all the time. So if I'm slow on the weekend or I wait till Monday, just be prepared, but I will get to you. Okay. All right. Carl says, uh, Hey Phil, I've been watching since you were drawing, uh, manufacturer diagrams on a whiteboard. Yeah. Yeah. That was a while ago. Uh, remember how horrible that was? <laughs> hey, it's like, <laughs> anyways uh it was good and horrible i hope uh it says uh, thanks a lot you're awesome you're awesome how about that i'm saying it back carl uh just wanted to uh to get a couple coffees oh he's buying me a couple coffees i probably could use those right now too so i appreciate that guys you guys when you show me kindness i appreciate that uh it's really cool in fact um in fact um, I did this on the podcast that I recorded today, so it's kind of duplicating this stuff, but I wanted to, I said thank you on the podcast, so I'm going to say thank you now. I want to thank you guys. Uh, when you do these super chats, I want to thank you. It's really cool. I want to thank you guys for buying the merch. Hey, there's my dog barking. I want to thank you for becoming patrons, and not because you do all those things, because right now in this world of COVID and the, the stuff that's going on, the manufacturers are really kind of pulled back a little bit on the marketing and i've been talking to some channels and some of these channels have basically you know are, see, are feeling a little bit of a like a withdrawal from the companies that like they're not sponsoring these demos and stuff and this channel i i say 95 percent it's really probably closer to 98 but i want to be safe and say 95 because i don't want to mislead you guys 95 percent of the revenues from this channel all in the, everything this channel's ever done has come from you guys and not companies and that's including when companies see, send product i count all that stuff so 95 percent of this channel so essentially the reason why i'm thanking you is because during all this mess because you guys show support when you buy uh, affiliate links and you know that sends a couple pennies this way off every transaction and you guys buy merch which is awesome and you guys super chat which is great and you watch the videos and you become patrons the all those funds that keep this channel going that's been making everything i do possible ha is still possible and um i'm sure everything's gonna have a slowdown because that's the world we're going into but it's just great because I, it's given me a, a ability to uh, basically pick and choose when I want to work with a company, how I work with a company and I, in the most politely way I can tell a company when to shove it, when to shove it, because again, you know what I mean? I don't have to worry about, you know, my, my relationships with the companies, but also I think I have the best relationships sometimes with the companies I have because I truly really like those companies. You know what I mean? So there you go. Thank you for that. I just want to take the time. I know that's probably not the most exciting thing to hear for all, but I hope it is. I hope you guys, in, uh, I, f I feel it when I'm trying to get across to you guys. Um, what else? Uh, hold on real quick. Uh, let me, uh, Matthew says we friggin' rock. You do Matthew. See how cool that is, right? It's really cool. Um, 
Steve says, is your Kiesel, wait, is your Kiesel your new go-to? Have you played the Abasi yet? Uh, if so, uh, what is your take on his guitars? I have not played the new Abasis that are made in Japan. I've played the, the Abasis that, uh, the original ones that, uh, that Falbo did. And, um, and those were all like, you know, prototypey models. So I haven't tried uh, Bossy since, you know, the change. I would love to, obviously I'm a fan of Tosin and, uh, you know, the guitars look cool, but you know, uh, I'd be honest, I probably wouldn't buy one, but I would definitely review one. If they sent one, I would definitely, you know, like to check it out, talk about it on the channel, you know what I mean? And, uh, and promote them that way. And then of course, you know, get, you know, get some inputs and some thoughts on it. Um, so that's, I can say that on my Kiesel is my Kiesel my go-to. No, you know what though? I will say this. I, I play it way more than I ever thought I would play it. I was playing it, I think last Saturday in the morning, like all morning. And I remember playing it thinking, I can't believe I'm picking this. You know what I mean? Cause that's sometimes, you know, if you guys are, are, have some cool guitars uh, you may have this feeling where you pick one up and you're playing it and you're like i wonder why i'm playing this like because as you look over there go why didn't i play that one and um so it's weird when guitars ha ha have that kind of feeling um so but uh but i have some exciting kiesel news to share with you guys soon if you guys we talked about that uh the one that they built and stuff so that'll be great um what else Okay, Alzdar, Alzdar uh, McLeod uh, says, Phil, have you been seeing deals increasing from manufacturers and music shops? I feel as if I am seeing the opposite and if they're doing less deals and refusing offers. Yes, let me let me be very clear uh, about this. And I've said, I'm gonna, pre, I'm gonna say this, every time we have this discussion, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to this. I'm not an authority of this, okay? So in other words, it's my strong way of saying I'm giving you an opinion. And the only reason I say that is because for some reason in 2020, when people say things on the internet, all of a sudden that's an authority of something. I'm not, so I'm don't, don't, don't even consider that. However, I want to tell you what I'm noticing as well too. I'm noticing the same thing as you. And this is why I think I'm noticing that there are two things happening. I'm not going to give the same speech as last time, but I just want two things happening. Sure. There is uh, and I'm just going to talk about America. Some of you guys that are not in America can relate for your reasons, uh, but uh, you know, we have 35 million Americans out, out of work and we have all this stuff and uh, there's recession and there's all this doom and gloom, but you also said at the same time, we don't have any product. <laughs> so, so yes. Um, I'm sure if you're going to notice with the manufacturers, look, I've been talking to a lot of these manufacturers. Okay. DiMaggio pickups, they're still shut down. They're, they're not open yet because New York's still closed. Um, you know what I mean? Some, some manufacturers, in fact, um, ironically, I can't talk about some cause I, you know, but it doesn't matter. Some are back, but they're, you know, it's not public yet, but, um, some companies are back to work, right? Friedman, uh, is back, uh, boutique amps is back to work. They're back manufacturing. So this company's manufacturing, but you can understand that I don't think Warmoth is back. I don't think they're back manufacturing yet. So you understand that what was happening is, uh, a lot of us were, uh, you know, some of us were out there working. What do they call that? Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> what do they call what's wrong with me? Essential. Some of us were essential, right? And they were working this whole time. Some of us were non-essential and we're working from home, right? And um, so what's funny about this is, or what interesting, when I say funny, I mean interesting. What's interesting about this is uh, a lot of us were still buying uh, buying gear this whole time. So I'm just talking about our guitar world. We're not gonna talk about the rest of the world. We're talking about guitar world. So these manufacturers that are going back, when they go back, they still have to finish all the stuff they didn't finish. Plus they have orders that, they, that came in while they were gone. And there's a possibility there might be a slowdown of the materials and products that they need to make this stuff. So while we all anticipate some kind of slowdown recessionary problem, and again, we're talking about the guitar community, right? You also understand that uh, if I was if I was a retailer slash manufacturer right now, I also don't know if I would bash and slash products out the door when it's possible that people might have to pay premium for those things when they can't get them later. So yes, and I've been noticing that is exactly what you guys have been noticing. It's hard to get the deals. Um, a couple of people is putting them out, but but a couple of people not. In fact, I noticed at first at COVID, there were some deals. It was like a couple of people maybe panicking, going, okay, and we need to move some stuff. And I think as they saw orders come in. But so you know, let me tell you something I've dealt with. A lot of the companies I've talked to, their biggest problem right now is that they have so much on back order that they can't send anything out. You know, they can't send anything for review. They can't send anything for uh, uh, a product, uh, you know, for products and stuff. They can't send anything out. So there's that too. So 
Yes. So you got to, you got to have your wits about you right now is what I'm trying to say. Okay. My guess is, this is my guess. My guess in this economy, in this market. Okay. Some people are going to get really rich and some people are going to get re really screwed. Okay. Because it's a volatile market. And what I mean by that is a lot of people don't know what to do next. And that's pretty much all of us, right? We don't know what's the right decision. So be calm, have your wits about you and understand to pay attention is what I'm saying. That's my advice. Pay attention. Because not don't just assume things. Pay attention. All right. Uh, Matthew says, buy you stuff. People need help with money right now. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Is you might see you might see an uptake in the uh, used market because again, that's going to be person to person transactions and not business transactions. So, again, though, but also also be aware of the fact that again. You know, like I said, don't assume that everything should be sold for a nickel because I think there's going to be a little bit of people holding out because uh, it's going to be hard to get stuff. So, uh, and then Thomas says, Hey, so I just want to say something to Thomas because he's saying, Hey, Phil, I'm having surgery on my fingers on Monday. Any advice to exercise while I recover? First of all, man, I hope you have a speedy recovery. Uh, and you know, it's, uh, it's obviously it's always scary when you get surgery. And of course, on your hands, if you're a guitar player, it's always freakier too. Um, I, I, I don't know, you know, like I said, I have a friend, a very close friend who's a hand surgeon. So I don't want to give you any bad advice. I don't know what, what surgery you're having on your hands. Um, so, but I would tell you, uh, this is uh, just, truth um because my friend is a hand surgeon what i will tell you is it's very i would before you go have the surgery uh this weekend think of some things uh questions to ask him and have them pre-ready and uh maybe either ask them or ask uh, uh you know have your uh you know whoever's going with you during the surgery to take care take you uh have them ask the questions uh and the reason is is don't what i'm telling you is and i've said this many times don't think of questions write them down because what happens when you get there, what happens if everything doesn't go the way you think and then you forget. So write down some questions and I would write down some simple ones. Like here's one I'll throw at you that I would think about is exactly that. What, what is the best thing I can do to recover from the surgery with my hands? And then they would, uh, you know, let them fill in the blanks there. So something like that. But it, uh, I just wanted to wish you a speedy recovery. Unfortunately, I don't have any good advice for you, but at least I could say, you know, take care. <laughs> okay. Um, let me refresh this real quick, real fast. Uh, uh, do, do, do. Okay. Uh, Steven says, uh, Steven says, how do you feel about the Epiphone valve junior? Uh, they're going cheap. Looks like maybe a nice entry tube amp, but not sure the valve junior in, it was like the first real, not real, but it's the first small amp. Like I, I think when I think of the Epiphone valve junior, that's the thing I think started the small tube amp revolution. Um, you know, to me, it was like that thing. And again, I'm doing off memory, but it was like that. It was, uh, remember Blackheart? There was Blackheart amps, which were really like made by Crate and those guys, but Blackheart pops, you got, and they, again, this is a little bit out of order, but around the same, same time reference, you have the Epiphone Valve Jr. Then you have the Night Train by Vox, and that's where it all starts. So the Valve Jr. at first, man, everybody was buying those like water. Everybody was crazy buying those, you know, modding them. In fact, it's hard to find ones that ain't, haven't been modded a little bit. So they, everybody was modding them up. You can use them for pedal platforms. If you get it for cheap, it's fun little amp, man. It's a great little amp. You know what I mean? Um, stuff like that, Steve. I, I, Steven, I, is I can tell you this: if you buy it right, you, it's no stress at all. It's just you. You're just changing your money into the shape of a little amp, and then when you're done with the amp, change it back into the shape of money again. So, like I said, like you said, they're going dirt cheap. If they're going dirt cheap. It means people are trying desperate to sell them. If people are desperate to sell them. Just remember that when you go to buy it and uh, think about exactly, think about how much you think you'll get for it when you sell it and try to calculate how you can get this amp for free. Not free. Yeah, for free by basically buying it at a great enough price that when you sell it, you'll get your money back. It's like you never were out anything trying it. And um, and and that's what I do when I stuff like that. I'm curious, right? You're curious to try it out. It's a great way to try it out do that. That's what I would recommend. Uh, Neil says, uh, grateful to be working and may we all remain safe. Absolutely. Neil perfectly said, uh, is, is like I said, it's a good time, uh, to, to remember how important everything is. And, uh, and hopefully it's a, you know, this is a good time for us to kind of talk and do this stuff to kind of get our, you know, Hey, I get it. I know everybody's look, week look like my week looks the same. looks weird. 
Every day is weird. <laughs> Sean, he's a Cubs fan. Uh, he's got another question. He says, how do you think the Studio Classic 20 head will sound through a 1960 slamp cabinet? Uh, there's one for $300 for sale near me. Cheers from Chicago. Uh, I have the 1960 slant cabinet. I had the original speakers in it. I took them out and put vintage thirties in it. Uh, I like the vintage thirties better, but the cabinet was fine the way it was. It just was one of those opportunities I had to swap around. Uh, that's a great cabinet for that amp. Absolutely. And here's the thing. That's what I love about this time right now for 412s. 300 bucks for a night. Dude, I couldn't buy a 1960 412 Marshall camera for 300 bucks 20 years ago. <laughs> used it's funny it's funny to me so buy it that's what's great the problem right now is nobody wants a 412 it's like trying to get rid of a, a boat anchor uh i don't know if that's a great analogy i don't know if anyone i live in the desert what do i know about boat anchors uh it's <laughs> it's try, trying to get rid of a boat a 412 cabinet's like trying to get rid of a boat so yeah 300 bucks i can tell you this i paid 350 for mine and it was in perfect condition uh used is what i paid for mine and i was really happy with that deal in fact i bought it on the spot um, I bought it from, uh, the 412 I have now, I bought from Sam Ash. I, when I bought my gold top, Les Paul with the, with the, uh, the, uh, classic, uh, I did a video like a uh, new guitar day and I bought it for my anniversary and I went there with my buddy Joe and we bought that amp and, and, uh, I don't know if it's in the video. I don't know if it got filmed in the video or not, but at some point I looked over and I go, is this cabinet really 350? And the guy's like, yeah. And so I go, I'll take that too. And I bought that cabinet. Um, Okay, so there you go. Uh, the next question is from Richard. Richard says, hey, can you help me find a Schechter Cali Jazz 5 from, from US? Uh, I don't know if I can help you find it. You, you, the best way to find it is the same way everybody else is uh, is um, is uh, eBay, Reverb, and Guitar Center used. Uh, dot com if that's still even a thing anymore who knows how that's functioning i haven't looked lately um but what i can tell you richard is if you're looking for something that's a little hard to find the way that's how the tone king sent me the stupid thing about the the guitar today he had it saved into a, a thing you can go ahead and put products in ebay it's a wish list you can put a wish list and a reverb on reverb and ebay and so when somebody lists it it'll just email you until it happened so or maybe you know tell your friend to do it like <laughs> <laughs> and then when you're getting coffee made, it'll say, you need to buy this base. And you'll be like, that's the base I was looking for. So that's a way to do that as well. Uh, and that's a great feature and it's easy and it's free. Um, Noah says, hey, Phil, I have a Fender American Pro Strat. Me too. And it says uh, with Rosewood neck, uh, I was thinking of swapping the bridge pickup. Okay. Uh, for a super distortion thoughts. Um, that's a great combination, man. The super distortion is a fantastic uh, combination with that. Um uh, I think it's great. So it depends. So to me, the super distortion in that strat is going to sound, you know, it's going to have a lot of uh, hair. <laughs> now I feel like I'm taking Michael's thing. It's got hair on it. And anyways, it's going to sound great. It's going to have, it's a little kind of like a ferocious thing. It's going to be cool. However, if you want something just like that, but a little bit more low end response, you can try the tone zone. The tone zone will just have a little bit more, uh, thicker mid low end frequency to it for a strat as I've experienced. So either way, I think you'd be good to go with those two. I, I would, I would pick those two as well. So, uh, Reggie wouldn't do a super chat for no reason. Thank you, Reggie. I always appreciate you, man. Uh, and, uh, Trevor says, Hey, Hey Phil, he says, Phil, he doesn't say, Hey Phil, he says, Phil, have you ever had an experience with Lyle guitars? What are your thoughts? I think it's funny, man. You guys keep finding guitars. I think I just said this yesterday. Every day I learn another brand of guitars. I've never even heard of before. How is this possible? How can you keep finding brands? <laughs> it's like, it's like, I, I always think I'm like, there's probably like 150 brands. And then I'm like, well, man, I hear about a brand almost every day. That's 365 days a year. So I've never heard of the Lyle guitars at all. Um, I will Google search it and put a link to their website. And maybe I'll check it out on the index. And then you guys can too on the replay. But Trevor, I haven't known, uh, but if uh, curious, I'm curious as always. SG Flying V says is gibson's 60th anniversary let's pull a viable investment i don't believe that anniversaries and limited color runs that's all fake to me <laughs> that's if you want a guitar because the anniversary model has a cool color or it's a cool looking guitar or if you want to limit it you know the, one of the limited runs that somebody does you want it because again it's something that appeals to you you should buy it for that reason but the i i, I call it fake demand they try to put out fake demand i have a video it's about to release it's called why the industry can't make fake demand uh why they and i talk about why they think they can but they can't 
And this is what exactly what I'm talking about. This is, uh, to me, all these anniversary things are fake demand. Um, they're going to do this again. It's not nefarious. It's not what I'm insinuating. It's just, they're going to say, Hey, yeah, it's our anniversary. Buy this guitar. Yeah, it's cool. Do something different. But in my experience, it's almost the opposite. When you look at the Gibson 50th anniversary guitars, those Les Pauls with the 50th anniversary banner on the 12th fret, those go for less. People don't want them. Uh, Paul Reed Smith anniversary guitars, again, tend to go for less. Harder to sell because if somebody's looking for a custom 24 and you have the custom 24 anniversary edition with the anniversary inlays, somebody, again, if somebody's looking for the anniversary, they're going to be happy and they're going to find it and buy it. But most people are going to be like, oh, I don't want the weird, I want the regular inlay. I don't want the weird one. So anniversary uh, guitars are sometimes, and what I remember about Fender selling Fender new was every anniversary guitar always ended up on the discount bin at the end of the year at Guitar Center. And that's why we would always cautious that when we would order them in for the shop, we'd always try to sell ours out as fast as possible because we knew if we had any left towards the end of the year, Fender was going to have to blow out whatever's left to Guitar Center and, and dip it uh, and ditch it. So that's my opinion on that. And that's just from the experience of that. And again, I'm not saying if you guys have anniversary products or limited run products, they're, they're not good. They're very good. And if you have one, you're excited about it. I think that's good as well, but I just don't think a lot of people are going to care all the time. That's for sure. Right. There's, and I actually, they don't ever care 90% of the time. There's probably a small amount of time where the anniversary works out that way. I think of, when I think of a cool anniversary product that did well was Marshall did that anniversary line of Marshall's Remember, it was blue. Those tend to be sought after for the most part. There's certain times when they do, but that was a totally different amp. See again, it's something different and exciting. And even then, I don't even know if it's commanding high dollar value. Uh, Michael Nelson, what's up, buddy? He says, hey, Phil, when I get stressed, I think about the times when you talked about the recession and getting through it. It's inspires, inspiring. Uh, we can get through it. Yeah, of course. Of course. And and that's a perfect uh, way to say it. That's why I said have your wits about you, right? That's what we learn. That's what you learn during this is basically, and thank you, Michael, because you know, what's great is, is, and that's, what's great about having community and having these weekly chats and we get to talk and we get to talk with this stuff. What I'm trying to say is now is the time for calculated decisions. Now is the time to think before you act in most everything you do, right? Um, uh, today. So again, so we're all very clear today when I got the text, Hey, this guitar came up for this great price. My brain went, okay, American made limited, never see it unique color at a great price. I felt like what I was talking about when I was talking about that Epi Valve Jr. I feel like I'll buy it. And even in the worst case scenario, I can get what I paid for it out of it. I just feel that way. I think seven's a strong number. I think I'll get out of it and, uh, and, uh, and I'll get it and I'll be happy. And I don't feel like the risk is there. So right now I'm taking calculated risk. I'm not really into buying stuff right now. That's not a good deal. And definitely is when you want to be smart about the deals when you're definitely talking about stuff. And I've said this before, uh, we don't need any of this stuff. Let's, let's be very clear. This is the luxuries that help us get through our daily lives. And uh, some of us are working musicians and you need this stuff, but you don't need all this stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's my point. So let's have our wits about us. Yes. And yes. And everybody will, you'll do fine. It's, you know what I mean? It's, uh, we'll do fine. Thank you, Michael. That was perfectly, perfectly put. Uh, Okay, I think we're gonna call it. So don't do any super chats because I'm I'm gonna look right now and whatever super chats left, that's the last one. Bill's the last one. So if anyone does one, I'm not reading it until next week. Uh, Bill says Octave Doctor review. Yes, Octave Doctor review this week guaranteed. Here's what I decided to do. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help myself with the angels. He sent me the angels uh, pickups. I like them so much. I'm not gonna demo them in the. Uh, the uh, Somnium guitar. I actually put them in my own Strat. That's how much I like them. I just want to show you how good they sound. I love them. Love them. But don't worry. You'll get the comparison, uh, you know, right, to some degree. But, yeah, love them. Uh, all right. On that note, I think we're going to call it. Thank you, guys. That was an awesome episode. I had fun. I hope you guys had fun. It's always nice to talk to you guys every Friday and see what's going on. Uh, and um, what else? That's it. That's it. That's how we'll call it. We'll call it. Hopefully the internet was a little better this week. I'm hoping, like I said, I've went to the highest tier they got. It's it showed a much significant improved upload speed. So we'll see. If not, I will figure it out next week again. I appreciate everybody. Like I said, this is a podcast. If you want to listen to it as a podcast, it's probably late to tell you now because you, all you guys already watched it. But 
Uh, and hey, just a reminder to go ahead and uh, I like this. Uh, what I'm basically saying, thank you guys for supporting the channel by buying merch, becoming patrons, uh, doing all the stuff you do, like I said. And but more importantly, to remind you guys that you don't have to spend anything to support this channel at all. Uh, you don't have to super chat, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is hit the like, hit the like button or subscribe, and and that does it. That's 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 good, man. I appreciate that. So, like I said, everybody can support uh, uh, this channel in, in in any way you want. And I appreciate all of it. And uh, on that note, uh, I will see you guys next Friday. All right. Oh, by the way, a little recap for the last people holding out. I did not get a chance to talk to Scott Grove this week. That is totally my fault. In fact, he's probably pissed at me for not doing it. But I was like, every day I was like, this is my priority. I was on my notes on my on my desk and I just didn't do it. But I promise you guys. And uh, so hopefully I'll get a hold of him and I figure out what time is good for him so we can do a separate uh, live show hangout and, and do that. Because again, I, he's, he's uh, one of the YouTubers that made me uh, when I started watching YouTube is where I was watching YouTube and stuff. So again, I want to do that. All right, guys. Um, on that note, I will talk to you guys soon. Or actually on that, I'll just leave it on the end. Uh, as always, thank you for your time and know your gear.